It's another episode of The Weekender here on CNBC TV 18. And while you binge OTT content on the weekend, we come to the office of Netflix to talk about their content strategy, their plans for India. We have with us the India content head, Monica Shergill. Let's go. Hey, Monica, how are you? Oh, hi. Did I catch Monica. you at a busy moment? No, no, not at all. I was waiting for you. How does one get a job where one gets to watch a lot of content and get paid for that? Uh, actually, we get to read a lot. And the journey of creation of something before it comes to the audience, I think that's the journey that we really enjoy. It's a long two, two and a half year journey for every, every title that you see. So uh, it is watch comes at the very end. Ah. Post pandemic, when people are going back to theaters, etc. There's been a definition of uh, the kind of content that there is, uh, whether it's movies or series, etc. This is OTT content and this is the large screen content. I mean, is there uh, a definition of content that way? What's uh, the new normal post COVID? I would say that, you know, great stories well told will work in any format and okay. any medium. I think this is more perhaps uh, a consideration for creators who create content for a specific medium. We have to be home for the best stories, the widest set of choice for our audience and allow the flexibility to watch on any device. Well, how, how many watch. subscribers would Netflix in India roughly have? About uh, five and a half million? I don't think we sort of, uh, you know, talk about the subscriber numbers, but I can tell you uh, that uh, we are way, way more than that. So in the pecking order, where does Netflix stand in terms of uh, number of subscribers? We hold uh, one third of the SWOT market share, okay. which makes us uh, very clear sort of winners on entertainment content. Uh, we are, uh, if you look at App Annie data, which is a third party data, we have 50% more engagement hmm. than any other competitor. Right. Uh, and if you look at the last, uh, you know, I think a uh, few months of again App Annie data, we've had 150% increase in our app installs, which is multiple times more than any other service. The reason why I ask this question is just a couple of quarters ago we had that comment from Reed Hastings saying that is frustrating why uh, there hasn't been uh, the kind of fire that he expected in the Indian market or the Indian audience. Where did that come from according to you? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, the comment got uh, misinterpreted a lot. He did not say that he's frustrated. What he actually said was that uh, it frustrates us that we have not been as successful in India, but we are leaning in there. What he was trying to talk to was the complexity of the Indian market. Mm -hmm. You know, where you see the opportunity size because of the population size, but you also uh, have to realize that India is a very complex market. There are many, many free options available as we speak. There are 50 plus ODD platforms. Right. You yourself said many of them are free. Uh, there is so much premium content available in front of the paywall. So for Netflix to actually be a, a service that is catering to such a large set of audience and growing at the momentum at which we are growing. India is also a value sensitive, price sensitive sort of market. Yes, yes. Netflix would be 2x its, uh, at least 2x its nearest competitor. Is that one of the reasons why maybe it is uh, slower than uh, what the original anticipation was in terms of subscribers when you compare it to the population that we have? I think uh, we are not in the race to just add subscriber numbers by discounting the prices. We are a pure okay. play entertainment service. There has been some uh, conversation about Netflix advertising as well, right? They probably look at advertising as a form of uh, revenue. Is, there, is that a possibility in India? Um, see, we've announced a global ad offering Yes. And uh, I think it will be rolled out in a phased manner. It's a great way to get a larger set of people also to join in an optional way. How, how does one stop people from sharing passwords? I mean, uh, what's the mechanism there? When you have sharing between households, then uh, you have a problem of not being able to invest as much in creating great TV and films. Right. And I think that is what we are working on, of finding ways where people can still share easily and securely, but by paying a little extra. 
So what we are attempting to do is to just make that sharing uh, more legitimate mm -hmm. by, uh, you know, getting subscribers to pay more for sharing if they want to share. What are your thoughts on regional language content in India, Hindi, English and uh, non-English international languages? I mean, how do, uh, you know, the viewership patterns for that uh, stack up in India? I think uh, what happened during COVID is that a lot of people did a lot of experimentation on Netflix. Mm. So they were consuming content across multiple languages. Uh, I mean, we were always uh, subbing and dubbing in more than 30 languages. I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, there is, you can go back to a pre-pandemic world where, uh, you know, the audience exposure was very limited. Uh, I think the audience has become discerning. They want to try new things. Language is a very, very big sort of uh, value, uh, uh, you know. South content has become very big also. So yeah, it's it's uh, very interesting times. I do see a lot of posters around here as yes. well about all your successful shows, etc. Such a creative space this is. Yes, it is. Actually, it's a fun space and creators feel the same when they come here. Let's see more of it then. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Let me take you around. <laughs> subscribers coming in in India I mean what's the pace of addition been for you guys we reconfigured our prices last mm -hmm. December we had a massive content slate coming out at that time which was talking to a very broad audience so we have been growing month on month it's been an amazing momentum that we've had in fact we are one of the fastest growing markets within APAC and we are one of the most robust contributors of subscribers to the global Netflix number. That's interesting because I remember the mobile plan that came was a world first for Netflix and now globally as well they're taking this example from India and implementing it there. But let's talk about content then because uh, I wanted to understand you know what goes behind as a thought process when it comes to selecting content. How much of that is gut? How much of that is data? And uh, how do you decide how much to pay for a certain piece of content? Lots of questions, very interesting ones together. So, you know, I'm actually going to lean on something that Ted says very well. Mm -hmm. I don't have a better line, so I'm going to use his line. So he says, gut, data, gut. Okay. Content is always a journey of starting with gut and ending with gut. And in between, you use the data to help inform your decisions better. For instance, crime is a very fast moving genre. Um, wherever you see, there is lots more crime content happening because more people watch it, the audience size is larger for crime, so you tend to, you know, choose a certain number of uh, interesting, unique, fresh, uh, you know, thriller stories, mysteries, crime stories. And where budgets are concerned, the way I like to say it is, and the way I have these conversations with my team also, is that the size of audience hmm. should dictate the size of the budget. When you have larger audience sizes, uh, you know, uh, that an idea talks to, then you have the ability to make them commercially viable also. When we speak about content, Netflix has been viewed as, uh, you know, a more urban uh, sort of platform. What proportion of your subscriber base comes from the metros? How much of that comes from the non-metros and how is that mix changing? I think we, we don't uh, slice and dice it as metro and non-metro. We look at it content first. Okay. So if you're seeing a film like Surya Vanshi on the service, you're seeing RRR on the service, Gangubai on the service, Darlings, uh, you know, you can tell and like, uh, you know, we all know India is a major film viewing uh, country. So when you see such commercial blockbusters, you know, coming on the service and doing well on the service, you get an idea that the watching of those films would be beyond the metros. Okay. And the audience that comes in then consumes your series, it consumes your docus also, it consumes international content in dubbed languages. So, you know, uh, for us, it's really important to program for the broadest set of audience. And that's how we look at it. Any regrets on content that you may have passed upon and that was successful on a competitive platform? 
I don't think there's any point in regretting. I think every project has its destiny. I think we are very happy with our choices. We are really looking forward to our slate in 2023. That's We've announced, in fact, a lot of the slate. I hope you like the trailers. And uh, uh, so we are very excited about what, uh, you know, the next few months look like. The, the glamour for the word boycott has increased so much when it comes to films. Uh, how mindful are you guys of the possibility of something like that happening in the content that you guys produce. I think the boycott wave is so unpredictable that yeah. you can't plan for it. You really can't plan for it. If we start programming content thinking like that, hmm. I don't think we'll be able to tell stories. So we don't, uh, uh, you know, at all look at those kind of things. Amazon, Hotstar, Woot and Sony Live. Which You're missing are... Z. Okay, Z5 and add uh, MX Player as well if you want to. What are the shows of these that you like? I may not be able to rattle off for all the services, but um, I mean, I've loved Family Man okay. on Amazon. Uh, I'm partial to Asur on Woot because mm -hmm. we created that before. Uh, you were at Viacom. You know, before. Yes, yes. And uh, then um, on, on Disney, um, I have liked, of course, uh, we've all watched uh, Coffee <laughs> with Karan. I, I can't remember for all actually, but. Your team is new, despite uh, Netflix being in India for six years. Uh, what is it that you've learnt as a company in the last six years in India? What in the last three years has changed for Netflix? What stays the same? Wow, big question. I think what we've learnt is to cater to many different tastes in the country. Uh, as an audience, India has to have some of the most nuanced tastes from uh, most other countries or regions across the world. We love our entertainment with a lot of convenience on the go. So I think having those mobile plans, etc., have really worked for us. And also, I think the fact that we love our films is something uh, which no one can take away from us. Global viewing of Indian films has increased uh, you know, global, and I mean global viewing, not just Indian mm -hmm. viewing, by 50% from last year to this year. This new team uh, that has come together, their goal is to really find the most defining series, uh, uh, you know, for India in a multi season format. We are going to keep working so that we really become the service of choice for the country. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Monica. This Thank was a you, Mangalam.